Hey guys, what's up? This is Bharat. You're watching iGAN. Today we are checking out AMD's Radeon RX 6700 XT. So let's quickly get started. So you're looking for a graphics card and you can't really go out there and buy one because they're in short supply and the prices that people are asking for some of the graphics cards that are available are really obnoxious. So what is the solution? AMD has launched yet another graphics card that you cannot buy. And this is something that we can test, but you can't because it's rarely gonna be available. And even if it is available, it's probably gonna be double the price. Now, design-wise, it's pretty much the same as some of the other reference design cards that we've seen. Of course, you're gonna not be able to buy the reference card from AMD. So you're looking more at third-party manufacturers like MSI, Asus, etc to pick up a graphics card if you want. The 6700 XT has 40 compute units and a base frequency of 2321 megahertz along with a boost frequency of 2581 megahertz. You also get 40 ray accelerators and 160 texture units. This typically requires a 230 watts of power. So you want to have a beefy power supply, at least 650 watts to power up this graphics card. This also has a 12 gigabyte of a GDDR6 VRAM, along with support for AMD smart access memory. Now how that translates to real world usage is what is really important. So what this is basically doing is replacing last generation's 5700 XT and uh, this allows you to bring about 1440p gaming at a comfortable 100 FPS for most games in this price bracket, which speaking of the price bracket is 38,990. So under 40,000 rupees excluding GST for this graphics card, but uh, good luck getting it at that price or good luck finding any in the first place. But let's move back to real world performance. So 1440p gaming will become more common with a card like this, an entry level card that does push the performance. And you can also drive a 4K as a monitor. So if you wanna watch 4K content, this GPU will work for that really well. If you're running games, 1440p will be the sweet spot with this graphics card. Let's look at some of our benchmark scores. So on Port Royal, we get a score of 5,779. And in the Blender benchmark, we did manage BMW 27 at 55 seconds and Classroom at uh, one minute and 56 seconds, while Geekbench's OpenCL score shows this at 1,1076 as a result. So what you're getting is entry level specifications and benchmarks compared to what we are getting with uh, this generation of graphics cards. So if you're putting it next to a 6800 XT or a 6900 XT, uh, the scores are definitely much less and hence the MRP is also definitely much less because of that. But this is a great entry point into gaming and graphics. And uh, this is also great for editing as well. If you're just starting out, this will be the card to get. Now for connectivity, you do get a DisplayPort 1.4 along with HDMI 2.1 on the back. It is a two slot card. It is fairly compact when compared to some of the other cards that we've seen. And it does require an eight pin with a six pin power connector for your PCI power to power up this card. Now gaming is pretty interesting. It will run Shadow of the Tomb Raider at about 120 FPS on 1440 which is uh, way up from last year's performance of, of the 5700 XT, which was getting about 80 to 85 FPS. On Dirt 5, this will deliver 70 FPS on 1440p, which is considerably less, but considering what all is going on in a game like Dirt 5, uh, this is a pretty impressive result. On Doom Eternal, with Ultra Nightmare settings, you'll get about 160 FPS at 1440p. And also if you're running Cyberpunk, you can get about 70 FPS at 1440p, of course, with ray tracing and everything disabled. As far as ray tracing is concerned, only a few games will support ray tracing with this GPU. Shadow of the Tomb Raider is one of them. At 1080p, it'll give you about 90 FPS with ray tracing enabled. And Dirt 5 with ray tracing enabled at 1080p will give you about 70 to 75 FPS. Now, ray tracing is currently in a demo stage. We've tested it out and it will be rolling out for Dirt 5 on 31st of March and you guys will be able to check it out as well if you do own Dirt 5. The good thing about the 6700 XT is the 12 gigabyte of GDDR6 VRAM. It means that for a long time, especially for a lot of games, you'll be able to run them at 1080p without any issues because of the abundance of RAM on the graphics card. This is also great for renders, which means that even though the renders will not be fast, most uh, heavy renders will be supported by this card because of the 12 gigabyte of VRAM 
uh, which was not the case with last generation cards which were running between 4 gigabyte and 8 gigabyte which was typically the standard this is a great entry level card for those who are looking to get into slightly higher end gaming and video editing but of course availability is something that we will have to see and we'll also have to see if amd decides to start selling products via their own website in india because availability and distribution for amd is a big question mark that's it for this video if you guys are interested in checking out the card we'll leave links to amd's page in the description below and if you like the video don't forget to smash the like button hit the subscribe button if you're not already a part of team again this has been bharat thank you guys for watching i'll see you in the next one